Good evening, workshoppers. Here we go. This one, starting off, is going to be a shorter episode. It's, you know, it's holidays here in the U.S. and all of that. Thanksgiving is tomorrow as we go and record episode 221, the Thanksgiving episode. You know, it, it, this isn't the, this isn't the first time that the the show has fallen right in front of Thanksgiving. Um, you know, but we've got we've got you know obviously some things going on. Working in a theater, I still actually work tomorrow and such. And so, if everything else and uh, everything, you know, just kind of kind of truncate this one. But but there are still some important things going on in the Diablo community that we've got to talk about. Um, and first and foremost, as I have continued to promise, we will start the episode, every single episode off with more information on the ongoing legal troubles going and facing, uh, ATVI because we want to make Blizzard better. Uh, and so we will continue to hold them accountable. And, uh, so if you, if you watch this episode, if you watched episode 220 live, or, uh, if you watched it on the, uh, the Twitch replay... Obviously, between the time that I recorded the episode and I got the episode uploaded to the podcasting platforms and YouTube, some things had developed. Uh, we we know that like uh, Jen O'Neill had left the company, and I was a bit uh, naive, best to, you know best way of putting it, in thinking that maybe well maybe things aren't so bad, and she wasn't exactly forced out of the company or anything like that. And well, uh, as I said in the previous intro, that was not the case. Um, uh, some, a new article came out and went through and talked about how, um, you know, uh, Jen O'Neill had felt as if that she could not make any meaningful changes at the company, um, even despite being set as a co-lead at, uh, you know, uh, Blizzard Entertainment and that, that she just could not, there's nothing that she could do. And so there's no point in her continuing to work there. And one of the, the biggest things is, is that when your company is under investigation for sexual harassment and sexual discrimination, um, you know, racial discrimination and all these other things, um, and you're going through and you're going to say, put, you know, a, a woman as the co-lead of the company, the bare minimum that you could do is at least pay the co-leads the same amount, Right. And they failed that litmus test. And so that is just speaks volumes as to, you know, what is actually going on at the, the upper epi, uh, echelons at Activision Blizzard. They're just out of touch with reality. They see this whole thing as a, a PR incident and they can just wait it out and, you know, flash some, uh, some you know, statements and stuff like that. And eventually it will all just, you know, blow over. Kind of like what riot games had happened to them in 2018 and they're continuing ongoing legal problems that no one ever wants to uh you know go and talk about uh and this is coming from a guy that you know i liked arcane i don't play league or anything like that i liked arcane the league of legends you know cartoon but i also still acknowledge that well you know state of california is also investigating riot for all of the same exact things that they're investigating blizzard for that legal case just isn't getting as much limelight in the um you know the uh, the media outlets as blizzard is uh, but yeah, it's, you know, they're, they're not taking this seriously and uh, ever. And also since then, like some more direct allegations against, you know, Bobby Kotick and he's going through and, uh, uh, allegedly holding information back from the board of directors that he's aware of all of these things that have been happening and all of these allegations, especially the ones involving, you know, the, the higher up, uh, people within, uh, Blizzard as well as, uh, not just Blizzard, but like Treyarch and a lot of other the developers underneath the Activision Blizzard umbrella, and that he hasn't been um, as forthcoming to the board with all of these things, preferring to keep them, you know, downplayed, as well as even uh, reversing decisions that HR has made as far as firing some high-end uh, developers that you know have been involved in, um, you know, sexual harassment cases and such, and saying no, we're not going to fire him. You know, and then like kind of like reducing the um, the the reprimand that they were facing, and just a whole bunch of other bullshit. Like, you know, his secretary at one point accused him of sexually harassing her, so he left death threats on her voicemail. <laughs> That's um cheeky. That's great. So obviously, as you can probably expect, that there has been a large outcry for the removal of Bobby Kotick as CEO of Activision Blizzard, as well as just, well, hell, 
let's just gut the whole board. You know, let's let's undo them all. Let's start over. Um, I don't say start fresh, but let's let's start over. And yeah, it's really shitty. It's continuing to be shitty. And despite kind of like the the token lip service that we talked about in the previous episode, not a lot has been changing so far uh, over there, and that's disappointing. That's disappointing. But in, in you know, kind of like in going with uh, the, the the current you know season and everything, it's Thanksgiving coming up tomorrow. There are some things that I am thankful for. Uh, I am thankful for those people that are going through and sticking it out at uh, Activision Blizzard, with specifically Blizzard Entertainment itself, that because they, they believe in the work that they are doing and they want to see the company that they work for be better. They want, they want Blizzard to be that idealized version that we thought existed, you know, in, in years prior. Um, nothing against those that, you know, have left the company, but by all means, why would you want to stay in a, a toxic, uh, environment that is doing everything it can in order to silence your voice and to not change the, the toxic culture that's been going on there. Um, you know, but, uh, definitely thankful for those that are sticking it out and trying to make that company better. If they, if they can't, then by all means, you know, Jin felt that was outside of her power to uh, affect any meaningful changes, and so she left, and there's no harm there. And, then, you know, if they don't get their shit together soon, who knows what else is going to happen. But also, I'm thankful for the talent that continues to go in. Um, I, I know I have a, a, a bunch of friends that have still been actively going through and applying at uh, Blizzard across, you know, various roles, various games and such. Some uh, Twitter acquaintances that I have. Um, that have actually recently got jobs or in part of the way through the interview process, you know, because one, they still believe that Blizzard, you know, can be that company that we thought it was, um, and that they want to make it that way. They want to affect those changes. They want it to become better. And, you know, one person in particular, uh, that recently was going through and got hired onto the, I believe it was the Diablo team was, um, a one uh you might know him as leviathan <laughs> so of course i have to have a huge shout out um to my former co-host and good friend uh, leviathan for going through and joining and getting uh getting the position of associate game designer uh over on one of the uh diablo teams i don't think that he's uh, officially stated uh which diablo team that it is so i'm sure that will go through and come out later but uh big big props uh to my main man Congratulations to him going through and starting over there. Uh, and so you, you know that uh, anything that he touches is going to be well vetted, uh, if for nothing else. Now I'm looking forward to uh, everything that that man, he's going to make some waves. I've known him for a while, and I trust everything that he does. So you know that he's going to make some waves. I'm definitely, definitely thankful for that. And I wish that you would all join me in giving a, a big uh, congrats and a jolly GG uh, to Leviathan there. Go ahead, hit him up on Twitter. He's uh, at That's Leviathan, uh, I believe is his, uh, is his handle right now. So by all means, go through, give that man the, uh, the well wishes that he is due and that he well deserves. Um, but going through, continuing on, what else do we have to be thankful for? Well, Season 24 in Diablo 3 is going to be ending soon with uh, the last day of the season uh, is coming up on uh, December 5th so make sure that you go and you get your uh, all of your uh, appropriate uh, you know seasonal goals finished get all those last minute ethereals if you are like me and waited till the very last moment in order to finish off getting um, all of the uh, ethereals set and ready um, one of the biggest tricks that you can do as I learned is to get a character specifically a witch doctor leveled up to level 31 and using them to uh uh what is it using that level 31 witch doctor to use blood shards to gamble rings as you really only have three potential rings that can drop um one of them being a puzzle ring so you've got a 33 percent chance whenever you find a legendary at the at kadala it's going to be a puzzle ring then with a like a level 5 through 11 character of whatever class of ethereal that you're trying to farm 
you use that puzzle ring in order to make a vault. You'll, uh, you know, you just need to get a level 25 gem of ease, so that way you can have a level 70 weapon to go and clear through all the content. Uh, you also want to make sure that you have illusionary boots, so run some Act 2 bounties until you get the illusionary boots. Uh, cube that, then on like your level 5 character, you just cube the, uh, the illusionary boots, you get your level 70 weapon with the Gem of Ease. Um, with a couple of Paragon points, you're just going to walk through all the monsters. Don't kill any of the goblins in the vault. Kill nothing. Make sure the game is set to Torment 6. Run all the way to the end. Just jump straight into the Greed fight, having killed nothing. Kill Greed, and then in her chest is a guaranteed chance to drop two Legendaries. And the only Legendary that can drop before level 11 is the Oryx Crown, or the way that the drop system works in Ethereal. So there you have it. You'll have two drops, which is uh, each one being a 50-50 chance of either being the Oryx Crown or one of the, the three Ethereal weapons for that class. Sometimes you'll get lucky. Like when I was going through and playing you know, the, the, the Wizard and the Demon Hunter and be able to just get all three of the legendary or all three of the ethereals that you need in two runs or you'll be like the monk where i think i'm up to like run puzzle of vault 20 and i only have two of the ethereals because i just have zero luck and i still haven't even touched the crusader yet i just happen to get like one crusader weapon while farming the blood shards on my max level character in order to funnel into and get those so level 31 witch doctor gamble puzzle rings um, a level 5 character on Torment 6 with illusionary boots and a gem of eased weapon, run through all the enemies in the vault, kill greed, collect ethereals, profit. You've got plenty of time. There's a lot of time. Just make sure that you're going through blasting on your, uh, your, higher, on your max level character, whatever highest greater rift that you can accomplish in, in order to efficiently farm blood shards. You're looking for you know, those, those 2 minute clears, 2 3 minute clears, because you just want blood shards you know per minute is what you're looking at um you know in order to make those runs as uh, efficient as possible and that way you too can go and get uh all of your season 24 ethereals and unlock those sexy transmogs uh just in time before everything to end um uh you know with that uh some of the the early kind of like cliff notes that we have coming up for season 25 obviously the um the legendary shards are kind of like the big mechanic for it but something that you can use if you're going to be solo leveling or even if you're group leveling can be used to exploit um not exploit but uh, gain yourself an advantage uh unless you're already going through and doing like one of those like super powered like you know running uh the cursed chests and the old ruins uh, and you're just you know leveling in like less than an hour anyways if you're kind of like going about it solo or you're just running rifts and you're just having fun and you're not like super min maxing it uh, just know that those shards can drop and while they are innately powerful you might get more power out of salvaging a couple of them if you uh luck into having uh multiples of them drop because when you salvage them they turn into imperial gems or better all the way up you know in order to i believe royals and getting those higher level gems particularly rubies for uh damage in your weapon or the experience in your helm or a diamond uh having the resist in your armor will make your character even more powerful allowing you to blast through you know torment six even longer than you might normally uh with going through and doing like you know the the little um trick with um uh, challenge rips which of course we don't have the actual start date of season 25 just yet but uh, until then don't do challenge rips if you don't 100 percent know when the season itself is going to start so december 6th don't do the challenge rift because that season might be starting on december 10th we're not sure yet they haven't announced the date but just just keep an eye out for it and uh, be cautious before you just auto click into that if you're looking for some bounty shards or bounty mats. Um, also, we've got a uh, some uh, information on uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected. We've got uh, a new patch going through coming out, and a new, uh, an actual kind of like their uh, first time PTR is going to be coming in the next few weeks. Uh, we've got um, 
some uh, some great improvements. One of the ones that, of course, is a big, much asked for is the Player's 8 command coming to offline mode. So that way you can increase uh, not just the difficulty, but the rewards of killing monsters, get increased experience, increased drops and such. Uh, so for those solo self-found players, they're able to go and get the most out of it as they, they possibly can. This was a, a long asked for feature because it was a mainstay of offline or single player modes back in the day. And while the single player mode doesn't exist as it used to, uh, because you still have to connect to the online assets periodically in order to validate your account so it's not the true um, single player mode, um, you can still at least now have one more function. Um, something that's now taking it further away from the original iteration is they're going and having um, active skill bindings. So you're going to have a little skill bar at the, the top of your normal menu that will allow you in order to bind um, uh, skills to these buttons, you know, by default, the, the F keys. Uh, and it will allow you to press those buttons in order to auto use those skills instead of having to click, you know, having to click like, you know the your hot key to switch to that skill and then click the mouse you now just have you know the the hot keys straight there in order to active activate the skills with a click of a single button uh, similar to how the uh, the skill system currently works for consoles on controllers so this one is more of a a big uh, pc change in order to uh, kind of catch up to the gap as the, the controller is just kind of a, a superior input mechanism at the moment outside of like trying to put things into your stash or pick up loot um, but as far as combat goes the controller is really really good and now this is going to bring a little bit of parity there again it's a very asked for feature sure this do, does does um you know modernize it a little bit more that maybe some uh hardcore diablo 2 uh purists are like no 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 but i think the majority of the player base is like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a great change i i love to see it um i can't wait to see what else they do uh, because there are also some other like little um, uh, gameplay improvements. Like you can, there's now mist text in PvP, so that way you can activate it to see whether you just whiffed your attack completely, or if they actually, you know, dodged it, or your attack, uh, you know, didn't connect due to missing attack rating, or you know, something along those lines. Uh, there's also uh, making a couple of improvements to like the lobby, showing you uh, squelch from muted characters, ignored characters. Uh, and then kind of having a, a better uh, realization of you know whether they're like a classic or an expansion character what their level of difficulty completed is just clearing some of that stuff up um, they're they're also now um, just uh, updating some uh, patching in some systems to making the, the cards compatible with a I believe it's the Nvidia DLSS technology um, so that way uh, they're now able to uh, activate that mode to increase the graphics quality and resolution while maintaining higher GPU performance. I don't know what that means, but hey, it's added feature, right? Uh, and of course, they continue to tease that, you know, there'll be more coming and they've got some ideas and they can't wait to show with us uh, some of the, the, the stuff that they've got brewing in the background, which of course is like the, the big question. You know, like when they, they dropped um, StarCraft Remastered, it was just like, here's an update, good luck. But a lot of people are looking at Diablo 2 Resurrected, and it's like, there's so much more that you could do. Uh, especially when you have, you know, some of the original developers, such as the uh, the Schaefer Brothers and, um, you know, David Reverick going and talking about a lot of the um, ideas that they had as far as a second expansion for Diablo 2 that they were going through and working on, or things that they had cut from the original game, uh, that are the big ideas and things, you know, such as like the, the cleric, or um, I believe it was that Act 5 was actually supposed to be Act 4, uh, and that we were going to go to Haragath first, and all those other types of stuff. And so a lot of things that got mixed around and changed. Uh, so there's a lot of ideas and things there, from just the original team, let alone what the current team over at Vicarious Visions or uh, Blizzard Albany, as they might soon be called, uh, whether or not you know they want to pursue and where they want to go from here. Game's popular. People are loving it. They continue to make improvements. We're getting closer and closer to ladder. Really looking forward to it. Uh, I can't wait. Can't wait. It's going to be cool. Uh, and of course, we'll go and round out the episode with Diablo Immortal. Uh, we just had a patch um, today, 
uh, that implemented a lot of features, but because of work and everything else, I haven't actually had a chance to go through and test it out. Um, but uh, I'm having a blast. You know, still have some concerns as far as their uh, the 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 pay for power aspects that are there uh, within the game itself. Uh, but for the most part, me just going through blasting and having fun, uh, it's it's been great. Uh, you know, it's got some nice, uh, easy like grouping features that kind of help um, the uh, the community aspects of it. I think the the shadows and mortals aspect. Now that we actually have that on the previous uh, test realm, uh, for the at least the one that I was on for like the content creators, it was very very sparse. There was a very small population, so there was no cycle to turn over. It just ran, and no one could challenge you. Now the Immortals are actually going to have a real challenge on this upcoming Sunday, and I can't wait to see um, whether they can actually hold on to the title or not uh, to see just um, how powerful those ramping um, cycle of strife buffs that the Shadows get to where it becomes just impossible to hold on and eventually will be overthrown. It, it, it's fun. This is, this is something that I really wanted to test last time and never got the opportunity to, and well... Here it is. There it is. Looking forward to it. Uh, and so, again, sorry for kind of like the uh, abbreviated episode. Uh, I will be back uh, shortly. I'm not sure if I will uh, wait until the 8th um, or if I'll come back next uh, week on the 1st. Uh, just keep an eye on Twitter, uh, you know, and I'll let you guys know as far as how my schedule um, pans out for uh, being able to record the next one. Uh, I know last year I took a, a break for the month of December. I'll probably still end up taking a break as we get to the the end of December, uh, but I'll still at least do one or two more episodes. And until then, please, like I said, keep an eye over at Twitter at the WM Workshop or on my personal Twitter at Nine Ball Gamer. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, you can always send me a, drop me an email over at Westmarch Workshop at BlizzPro.com. You can follow the show here live on Twitch every other Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash blizzpro. And, of course, you can find you can find the show on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, your podcasting platform of choice. Uh, but until next time, stay slant and uh, be thankful, you know, for, I don't know, great loot. Yeah, I probably could have thought that one through a little bit better. <laughs>